Welcome back to the channel. I want to do a little update on this tractor here. Now, um, if you've seen some of my videos I posted there of some fall plowing, I've had my uh, other tractor hooked to that chisel plow. Um, I had the 1155 hooked to it and did all my fall plowing with it. Now normally I do my plowing with this tractor and this does a lot of the tillage work too. This is you know my bigger tractor, my biggest one I have. And, and if you remember I mentioned in that video that the reason I switched tractors is because this one was um, giving me some issues and it started last spring in fact i think it might even been the spring before i started having little issues but last spring it really gave me a lot of problems to the point where i couldn't hardly use it anymore so what was going on is I'll turn this switch on see that's not going to do it okay if you see this red light down here it just went out but use the clutch this one down here what it was doing is as i'm going through the field or even down the road that light would come on and that green light would come on and that green light what that is is the uh four-wheel drive and what that is is it's a it's a safety precaution we want to per se so what that red light was saying is, is well, you got your hydraulic pressure is low. And so it has a safety feature in. I don't know, does that light come on? It locks the four-wheel drive in, which I don't know why it would lock the four-wheel drive in, but it locks it in. And then uh, down here, this is my low and high range. Well, it was not letting me switch to low and high. Whatever range I was in that's the gear you know that's what I was stuck in it also was uh, locking the PTO out as well wouldn't allow you to use a PTO so and it would come on and off intermediately intermediately I should say um, it, sometimes it would come on for five minutes sometimes it would come on most of the day and maybe it'd go off every once in a while so the first thing we thought was there's a pressure switch down in the rear end that basically it's what regulates the pressure it um, you know it, it's a sensor I guess you could say it tells you whether your um, your hydraulic pressure is low or high now first thing obviously we did I had someone check the pressure and I had hydraulic pressure so I wasn't losing hydraulic pressure so that wasn't what was going on even though that's what you know the light and the safety thing was saying so we figured it had to be that pressure uh, if you call it a switch or a sensor I don't know what the right term is but so we replaced it still didn't have uh, any result it's I still was having that problem and the thing of it coming on and off was getting worse and it was getting to the point where it was staying on pretty much all the time in fact there was a couple times uh last spring i got uh i had to you know i was done with the field it's not so bad when you're in the field and it comes on because you know four-wheel drive comes on okay that's fine um I'm in my gear that I'm needing to work the field with, no problem, but when I want to go, leave the field and go down the road, then I couldn't switch out of low range into high range, and I couldn't take the four-wheel drive off. And they told me, you know, whatever you do, don't be driving down the road with a four-wheel drive on, it's not good on it. So I was pretty much, a band, you know, stuck at some of these places where I... I eventually I just I there's nothing else I could do I drove it as slow as I could 
because I was in low range to begin with, but because of the four-wheel drive, and I just had to creep from one field to the other, and it, you know, you know, going three mile an hour down the road. Uh, luckily, my fields weren't very far apart, but it's still, I mean, in, A, you're holding up traffic, causing problems that way, and B, it's just eating up time that I could be, you know, in the next field going. So, I've been trying to figure this out since then, you know, what is going on? We We kind of had narrowed it down that it was a an electrical issue and underneath the floorboard of the cab is a computer box if you want to call it that and there's a bunch of wiring harnesses um, up underneath there and uh, so we started messing around in there now I'll take you down there and uh, kind of show you where where we're at on that so it's over here on the you want to call it the passenger side of the tractor underneath this part of the cab and I don't know how well you're gonna see but there's a plate right here I had to unbolt and then you see all this wiring mess here so we started just checking and I it was me and some other people involved uh, you know trying this and in certain times you had to have two people here anyhow because you needed one person in the tractor watching that dash while another one was under here messing with stuff and you know, wiggling certain wires and, and seeing when that light would go on or off. So we thought we had it pinned down. I mean, it took a little while, but let's see if I can get a light here. Again, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but... Um, Right here is this computer board, if you want to call it. And there's different wiring on it. Well, this, this particular one right here, this plugged in. We finally figured out that one of these wires or two of these wires that were kind of together, when we wiggled it ever so slightly, you could get that light to go on and off. So, we thought, okay, it's it's in this plug. And we thought, well, we just need to replace that plug. Well, the number one problem is they never made that plug as a part. You can't just buy that plug. Um, I don't even know if you can buy this whole harness, but this harness runs clear up into the tractor somewhere. Uh, it could go on for miles in that tractor so we couldn't get a new plug so then our thoughts were well okay let's try to find a used one you know off of tractor to salvage yards well that was basically a no-go um, I called several salvage yards and went to some and Either they didn't have a tractor that, you know, had those type of plugs or they would tell me that, you know, most of the tractors that were in the salvage yards, the reason they're in there is because they burnt. So all the electrical stuff, the wiring's all burnt. <clears throat> so this has been going on all winter. I've been trying to get this diagnosed and fixed. So I finally went to the dealer, an Agco Massey dealer, explained my problem, and they thought maybe they would have a plug laying around there, so they looked everywhere and they couldn't find one. And then they said, well, the wire that's bad that's going into that plug, man, if there's any way you could get that pin out, we could put a new pin on that wire because we're assuming that's what was, is wrong, is that pin is 
loose in there or wore out and it's not making good contact with the uh, with this computer board so I tried and, uh, and surprisingly I was able to get that pin out and I went back and was able to show him the pin and we come up with a pin that would fit I clipped it on to the wire and plugged it back in there and to no avail it's still um, doing the same thing if if I wiggle this whole vase a little, just a little bit, every once in a while I can get that light to to go out, but within a few seconds it comes right back on. So, in talking with the dealer, unfortunately, they got a feeling that it's this computer board, that it's starting to either go bad or the ends on that, where that plug goes in or is bad or starting to go bad and it's but there's no fixing those ends i mean it's it, that computer board is all one piece so i think unfortunately that's maybe where we're going to have to end up going basically i've i've exhausted all my what i know to do or can try to do on it so I basically have asked the dealer to come out and have them make sure I'm not missing something here. You know, either another wire or something of that nature. And if if they can't find anything, then, you know, I think we're all just going to rule that it's going to have to be this computer board. And then they're, they're going to have to swap this computer board out. Which I didn't even realize that this old of a tractor would have something like this. I think this tractor is a 1990 model. I never figured it would have a computer board like this in it. And of course, as always, these computer boards aren't cheap. Um, I think it's going to be about two grand, they said. Two thousand dollars I certainly don't want to spend. Of course, I'm going to have to have labor because they're going to have to install it because they said it also has to be put onto their laptop and programmed through ADCO to this tractor. So, obviously that's not anything I can do because they have a special program that they use. So that's where we're at with this tractor. Just thought I'd give a little update on it. Spring's approaching here and I'm, I'm hoping, well, we better be able to get this fixed in time to use it for spring tillage. But I just wanted to do a little update on this and I, at the end of this video, I hope to, uh, you know, do another update on what we ended up doing and hopefully it's, you know, <laughs> it's fixed and I'll be able to show you what was done and the tractor will be up and running and we won't have any more issues. But I just wanted to, thought it was something I'd just talk about a little bit here. I know this probably isn't going to be a very long video, but at least it would uh, show you why I wasn't using it back in the fall and what my issues were. And hopefully I kind of explained it well enough. Sometimes it's not easy to explain what what exactly is going on, but bottom line is I can't run it the way it is uh, with it locked in four-wheel drive and with it locked basically right now. I think I've got it in low range, so I can't uh, I can't even move it over to high range to go down the road if I wanted to. Um, so the whole situation is just not good. I'm hoping that it's not going to be a hard fix. I'm hoping, I, I wish it wasn't going to be the computer board, but unfortunately I got a bad feeling it's going to be. But maybe you'll get lucky and it's a, a wire or, or a connection that I'm not seeing or, or isn't, I am not aware of and we can uh, have a quick fix on it, but one way or the other, we got to get it running, that's for sure. 
kind of dead in the water here right now with it. Oh, I guess I wish I wouldn't have uh, waited as long as I did, but I, you kind of forget about it in the summertime, and then when fall came around, I started messing with it more, and I had a gentleman or two come and look at it, and between me and a couple other guys trying to figure it out, and like I said, it's, sometimes it took two of us to to be here to 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 actually do something because somebody has to be in the cab. And then winter hit and you kind of forget about it again, but I've been trying to do something here for the last month and a half. I was hoping to, it was just going to be a plug issue and I could either get a plug or once I thought we had that pin out, I thought, oh, we got it solved now, but to no avail, it wasn't it. So I've rambled on enough. Again, hopefully the next part of this video is us wrapping it up and figuring out what was wrong with it and we got our back running. We'll catch you then. Okay, well I wanted to do a final, I guess, update on this tractor. Um, obviously earlier in this video I was talking about the problems I was having, the issues I was having with this tractor, so I believe it's resolved now. Walk over here. You remember that was earlier in this video I was talking about the computer, which right here it is. It turns out that was the issue. Um, the dealership uh, came out and they checked a bunch of other stuff, wiring, and did some other diagnostic testing and came back to the app uh, was this computer board. So they had to put a different one in, which he's got it all buttoned up right now, but it went right up in there. It's a little bit different than the one that was in it. This is supposed to be, I believe, like an upgrade. So the <clears throat> covering design and everything's different. But um, they put the new board in. They had to program it to meet this tractor's. Um, it has to be programmed for this exact tractor. So they got that done, got it installed. Um, he ran it and um, said everything's working fine now. So all the issues I was having with the lights coming on and the locking this out and locking that out uh, seems to be resolved. Now I haven't, I haven't drove the tractor. Um, obviously I'm going to here in the next day or so I need to get this tractor serviced anyhow so I'm uh, obviously going to check it out then but I probably won't truly know until I get it going in the field you know where you're working it and get everything warmed up and going through the field and everything but I hope that solves our issue um, certainly should so I just wanted to give you a, I guess a what I hope is a final update on this uh, whole issue I had dating clear back to last year with the electronic issue I guess if you want to call it obviously when I get in the field I'll uh, give you a little more update on it let you know if everything's still working well and all that good stuff but at least for now we should be good to go So with that, that'll wrap this video up. Thanks for watching.